the More Movement Crew. Welcome to the More Movement Crew podcast. This is episode 10. I'm your host, Kenita Porter, and today... (laughs) <laughs> we're gonna have some fun we are gonna have some fun but before we have fun what we're gonna do is you're gonna go and subscribe to this channel so that you can get the latest episodes every week that we put them out so I'm excited that we've gotten to episode 10 I remember it seems like the other day I was just having a conversation about doing a podcast yeah. and you were there um, so <laughs> I'm super excited to everybody who's been viewing the podcast Um, Definitely check us out. We are also streaming on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, all of the different platforms. So if you want to listen to the podcast, please feel free to subscribe to those as well. All right. So let's get into it. So today's special guest, I have been waiting (laughs) and waiting to have on my show. Right. (laughs) We have been talking about this. For a very, very long time. Very long right? time, yes. Um, before I even bought a single <laughs> piece of equipment, right? <laughs> yeah. Before I even brought a computer to edit on, like we were talking yeah. about doing this podcast. And I'm so glad that you finally get to see that it actually has come to pass. I know. Now I know what a podcast is, for see? example. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm with it. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm so excited that we have made it to episode 10. So this is going to be a great episode, definitely. But before we get started, we're going to play a game. And the game is called Five Questions. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Question number one. What is the most interesting place you've traveled to? And why? Oh, interesting. Interesting. Interesting place. Interesting place. Uh, that's such a cool question. I love that. I, so you know this, I'm really lucky. I've gotten to travel a whole bunch. Um, God, interesting. So the first thing that came to my mind, this is why it was going to be, you're maybe excited because I don't, <laughs> I can't even ample, answer a simple question. All right. First thing that came to my mind is why the, all of the travels I had are so cool because everywhere I've gone, so I've gone all over the world. I mean, there's certainly people that travel a lot more than me, but I've gotten a lot of opportunities. What I like is the thing that I've learned is no matter where you are and what part of that place you are, like the hopeful part for me that I've learned is that almost everybody is pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. Lots of cool differences, right? Uh, that's not to discount like cultures or history of places, but like just as individual human beings and like families, mm-hmm. most people are just out there trying to like find some happiness in life wow. and like. Do, do well Try for their to survive. family. Yeah, right. just like make the best for their family. So right. like, that's a cool, That's every time travel comes up, that's like the first thing that pops in my head. But to answer your actual question, instead of just doing my stuff. Well, that's why I said why, because <laughs> I figure. But that's why travel in particular, if you're fortunate enough to be able to do it, is really cool. And by the way, I would say you travel, whatever you're able to do, like even yeah. travel in like different little places. To states. Cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think the most interesting place I went to Easter Island, <clears throat> or uh, as they call it, Rapa Nui. Mm. And uh, the, so Easter Island is like the place with everybody, most, not everybody, a lot of people know like the, uh, the uh, artifacts there, the big heads on okay. the island, right? Mm-hmm. So um, it's a very, it's the most, I think I have this right, as, as far as I, as I know, it's the most remote inhabited island on earth. And the, mo- the interesting part there was, um, so you fly, we were, we, we, you fly to Chile and then you fly over there and it's, it's a long flight. But like the interesting part is that you can hike basically up to the highest point and you can see around the island. Wow. And then you are like, you have this knowledge of like how remote it is. And it is like, I did like, I had no anticipation that this would be the case, but it's like a very eerie feeling. Like, but I think there's real. Uh, power in this and the idea of like you know I, you know I'm gonna end up in the woods I'm yeah. gonna end up in the woods in yeah. Montana someday this is my, <laughs> my definitely goal. definitely but there's real power in being disconnected from what we're used to particularly That's very disconnected it's though. very disconnected but it it's good though because it jolts you off of your uh, center because you get so used to like and then I hop on Frankfurt Avenue yeah. and then I turn a it's left, three o'clock then, yeah right it's, and we all do that and there's nothing wrong with it because you yeah. like you got to get through your day. But um, just that, like, getting knocked off your axis and being like, 
man, I can see all the way around where I am. There are really no natural resources here. And like, it is super far to anything else. Yeah. Like that's a very, that's oh a different gosh. feeling that you don't feel. Plus the people are just very cool. Um, I think island cultures in particular, they vary mm. a lot, obviously, but like just people that live on an island, I think that's such a different type of culture than oh, like yeah. people that grew up in landlocked areas like me. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> so it was really cool. Plus it's just like, I don't know, it's just like, it's very interesting. It's just totally different than, and it's got a, it's got a mix of all of these Indonesian and Polynesian cultures and stuff. And really? Like, just got a really very cool history and there's a lot of mystery to it. Like there's not a clear consensus on why, like there's some archeological history. Now we're really like getting into professor Keep going. <laughs> there's like a, some archeological record and like history about like, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the cultures of people that were there and mm -hmm. why or why not, like it was a very thriving uh, agricultural community and fishing obviously, mm -hmm. but like at cer a certain point they depleted their own resources. Like they took down almost all the trees mm -hmm. and they basically like, uh, it became sort of tribal warfare to the point where they were sort of like living in caves on mm -hmm. the on this little island, like fighting one another. So it's this, but, 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 but there's not like clear consensus why. Yeah. So like there's this cool mystery it's like to a it unique too, history. right? Wow. Yeah. So it's like it's a very, very. Is that why you wanted to go there though? No, I I didn't actually uh, want to. <laughs> yeah, I got Look. hijacked <laughs> on this long flight. <laughs> no, my so the reason I've been so one of the reasons I've been so lucky to travel to really different places like mm -hmm. that. Uh, is my father-in-law is a very he's got uh like wanderlust like no one i've ever met mm. and he's a successful guy and he's very generous and so he you know chooses to take his family yeah. on places he wants to go so he he wanted to go there and so you guys were like no. cool yeah, let's go. Say no. i was yeah. wondering because that's yeah. not usually on the list it's for not people. yeah that's right um specifically yeah. so you just think like hmm, what made you want to go there yeah wow. it's not i know it's not and you can feel that too when you're there too because like obviously there's lots of tourists mm -hmm. there but it's not like, um, it's just sort of a different, because there's, yeah. not, there's not a lot of people, period. Period, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but there's definitely tourists and stuff. It's not like you're totally, you know, remote. So but. when you guys got there, like, how did they respond to you guys? They were cool. I mean, um, they were, I mean, they were, everybody that we interacted with was great. And we went, like, we went into, like, the little island bar and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but, you know, a lot, a lot of their, their economy, I think, is based on uh, mm. tourism, mm. I think. It's what it seemed yeah. like to me, right? So they're set up for it. Um, but it seemed like a very genuine, like it didn't seem to me, it didn't seem like they were it was like a put on. Yeah, yeah. It didn't seem like it was put on either. Like, Oh, we better kiss these Americans asses. So, so we they get, were so used they to get, people. Yeah. Coming. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. And it was cool. So it's not like there's a remote feeling, but it's not disconnected necessarily. Yeah. Right. Like it's modern. And, um, you know, I think I was talking to some dude about like a Simpsons episode. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> so they give, they get visitors, yes. but they don't get visitors like with the amount that like other countries would no no you know what i'm yeah, saying it's not like, like going to italy or something yeah, yeah like yeah, going yeah. to italy or even like yeah. jamaica like people go to jamaica yeah. all the time yes right so they yeah. don't see as many visitors so no. when they do they're like hey yeah i mean you, you know to you gotta make it's a real choice to go to easter island <laughs> oh my <laughs> god i don't know if i can i can do it <laughs> how long is the flight from chile i think it's i want to say it's like three hours it's okay. a long time ago though so i can't remember yeah maybe Sheesh. four hours i don't know but you like you love the remote that remote feeling yeah i do yeah like yeah i, I don't know yeah. i may have a little anxiety around it <laughs> maybe like oh my it's, god listen listen we've gotten too disconnected from that <laughs> a castaway i've been feeling like castaway. <laughs> it's not always an emergency can i call you can, can go call in the wilderness and it doesn't have to be an emergency that's true we, i gotta work on that i have to really work on that yeah yeah it's good yeah. you just have to know what you're doing or know your plan like, next question <laughs> yeah plan yeah, yeah exactly no, survival plan. plan yeah right that's probably what yeah yeah <laughs> next question <laughs> what gets you out of bed every day <laughs> um you see how I turn away from the microphone there? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, what gets me out of bed every day? Mm -hmm. Well, literally, my kids get me out of bed every day. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you mean inspirationally. What yes, gets me out of bed. inspirationally. Okay. All right. Yeah, because my four-year-old little boy walks up and wakes me up every morning. But, uh, okay, so this is, like, going to sound like a non-answer. What is an answer? It's expected. <laughs> <laughs> totally you know i can't just go straight down the yeah line. yeah uh everything so <clears throat> what i mean by that is uh i get like a lot of joy out of life mm -hmm. and um so i have 
regular days like everybody else. I'm not trying to be Tony Robbins. <laughs> but uh, so like I have days where I'm bored. I have days where I go to bed and I'm like, ugh, I ate too much yeah. or whatever. Right? I have normal. I'm normal. But like I really do. I experience a lot of joy out of life. So I really like experience every day as being like a cool opportunity to do fun stuff. So like, <clears throat> and I particularly, and I, I feel very lucky for this because I think it's more of a natural mm -hmm. inclination. It's not something that, I, that I've really like worked on or uh, really need to focus on this. But like, I really take particular joy out of little things. So like, I really genuinely enjoy like making up the pot of coffee for me and Alicia, my wife, <laughs> first thing in the morning. I enjoy like the good, a good mug, you know? I enjoy like- <laughs> A I good really, meal. Yeah, I enjoy like, you know, getting the wa the right waffles for my kids, or mm -hmm. I enjoy like a good workout in the yeah. evening. Like I really like a, that kind of stuff, but I also like um, going after something every day too. Mm. So uh, it, it, look again. Some days like I just don't have it, and some days like it's it's queer eye at the end of the day on Netflix, <laughs> right? <laughs> but some day, a lot of days, like I do have a lot of like I really want to be. Uh, I always have felt like I, I like I have like. Uh, something invisible like pushing my back mm -hmm. and like so that's all that's good and bad right like mm -hmm. so my wife is always yelling at me like when I'm working out or I go for a run I can't go 75% <laughs> she's like you're you gonna go 100 old man you're gonna kill yourself right but it's like how I feel uh, on like every day so I get up because I feel like this uh, I'm not a morning person mm, me but neither. getting over that yeah. I feel like what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Yeah. It doesn't have to be some grand, I don't want to go out and save the world every morning. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, I get a lot of joy out of like, uh, weeding and edging my mulch beds mm -hmm. <laughs> too. I want to try to do big stuff too, but like, there's just real pleasure in like attacking the day for me. Yeah. Like, I really love that. It's, and there's just so much opportunity. If you look, if you like, just, if, if I feel like if we can try to appreciate more of like the day to day stuff about life, uh, like attacking your day can become a little bit a little bit more enjoyable, right? Because like you, even though we're all trying <laughs> to save the world, we are. You're not going to do it on Tuesday, right? right. It's going to no. be a culmination of effort, mm -hmm. but um, but it is. The, I mean, I definitely agree when you say it's the little things. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do something, I think I feel like with you, it's like if you're going to do something, mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Like really yeah, yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, why sure. would I go run? Yeah. And give it half. Like, I yeah. should have stayed home. Yeah. So that's kind of yeah. like what? Yeah. It's like, if you're going to do something. Yeah. If you're not going to try. It up. I <laughs> it up. If you're not going to try. Yeah. It, like, if you're going to do it, then do it. You'll fake it. If you're going to get off the pot. Or get off yeah. the pot. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just wasting time. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. just, just do it. And then, you know what's great about that? Yeah. Because... I'm, now I'm selling my own personal point of view. <laughs> What's great about that is like if you fail, when you, which you will all the time, mm -hmm. you don't feel bad about it. Yeah. I don't feel bad about a lot of failure. Like the thing that we're doing professionally, KP, I, people are nervous about whether we'll fail or not. Mm -hmm. And I'm not nervous at all. I'm not either. Because I know how hard people are working. Mm -hmm. I know the kind of effort we're putting, that smart effort we're putting mm -hmm. into. If we fail, it's because it's not, it's sure as hell not because we didn't do the right, right. stuff. So That's true. to me, it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> It comes out like sometimes this comes out and makes me sound like an idiot. But the first, my, I've never run a full marathon. My buddy and I, that I used to, uh, my best friend and I, uh, we used to live in Chicago together, <laughs> and we uh, decided in like I want to say it was like July or something mm -hmm. that we were going to run the Chicago marathon, which is in early October or late September. And having never run a marathon before, we were going to just qualify for Boston. That was our. <laughs> That's I mean, your that's thought ridiculous. process. So we started training at like <laughs> six minute forty five six yeah six minute forty five second miles was our training pace uh -huh. until somebody knew what they were doing was like hey, God, you're not gonna make it <laughs> they were right but like that's but kind guys, of the mentality yeah. right it doesn't always work out never run I've never run a marathon let alone the Boston marathon <laughs> but I was yeah. out there training <laughs> yeah so that's a whole so, other level that's yeah. next level yeah well I don't know if it is or not but it's and you're like. Oh. It seems like it is. <laughs> it's what gets me out of bed in the morning. You got to go for it. You got to go, go for it. You got to go for it. You got to go for stuff and have fun doing it. My it God. is. It is. But definitely when you said like it's the little things, because I think a lot of times you just kind of like, oh, this is another thing I have to do. Yeah. Like for me, like I get up and I make like a checklist of like all the things I want to accomplish for yes. the day. But I'm like begrudgingly <laughs> doing those things. I got to call this person. Yeah. I got to send this email. Right. Oh, God. I just wish I could just. 
I'll be glad when the checklist is gone so I can yes. just be like, ah. Yes. Like, that's me. Yeah. But I don't, like, really take pride in, like, <laughs> calling or, do, you know, that kind of thing. Well, I mean, look, I have to do the dishes a lot for people in our house. And uh, I hate doing the dishes. Like, there's not joy in everything. Yeah. But you know what yeah. I do? You know what I do? I pop in my little earbud and I listen to my sports radio. Wow, you're so doing the dishes. So there's something enjoyable to it. So, that's true. But it's, that's never going to be a joyous moment. But still, yeah. anyway, you can, I mean, you can find... You can you can choose to find a little bit of happiness and stuff you're doing, or at least like I know a lot of times in conversation at the office we'll say like I'll be like so you'll be like hey what do you got going on today and and then you'll be like well I, yeah I'm gonna go check out a baseball game so it's like yeah. you know that the day may be pretty drab right yeah, yeah. or pretty dry yes that's right but then at the end of the day you're like hey I know I'm going to this baseball game mm-hmm. I'm gonna have a hot dog yes I'm gonna- <laughs> yes that's right. And I'm yeah. gonna have a drink and I'm gonna relax. So that's right. It's something to look forward to. Or pizza, pizza Fridays. Is it pizza Fridays? Yeah, we have a pizza and a movie every Friday Fridays. night. See? Yes, we so, do. Yeah. So it's the little things. Maybe I need it to is. get just like some staple things because I don't yeah. have anything staple. It's just like, no, well, whatever I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you walk into a baseball game, a bats game. This is just an example. Walk into a bats game on a Friday night, like after a long week of work, grab a couple of beers and a hot dog or whatever you like. And like the sun's going down, you know, and the crowd's there. Like that's a beautiful thing. It's very simple. It sounds it's like cheap, it. but it's like a nice, you know, it's a nice thing to do. And it just like relaxes you. It gets you out of the mindset of like that day to day stress stuff. It does. And because uh, we all have to like send emails we don't want to send and be on Sending conference meetings calls we don't, don't want to. Do. Yeah. yeah. And that's part of being a grown up, part of being a professional. Um, the way to, I think the way to get through that long term is make sure it's for some purpose that you believe in. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, go play in a softball league and be sore like I am today. Does he forget? I was about to say, does he forget who he's talking to? He mentioned bats game and softball. He knows me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, he's start. hypothetically speaking. <laughs> right. right. That's true. Yes. That hypothetically. Because you were like. <laughs> placeholders. Because you said, wouldn't you like to watch the baseball game and have two beers? I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no. None of that sounds great, but... I just described a scenario that would make your week worse. <laughs> but do that for to find some joy. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, uh, okay. The sunset was nice, though. The sunset Watch, part, The yeah. sunset, the sunset. Because <laughs> baseball has way too many innings for me. Way too many. I've convinced Alicia that baseball is good because there's beer there. And you don't have to pay attention to every pitch. You can just talk. So she's like, okay, cool, I can do that. <laughs> you fell for it, Alicia. <laughs> fell for it. All right, question number... Your favorite question. Yes. This one's going to be your favorite oh, question. Oh, oh. What color? Yep. Uh, forest green. <laughs> <laughs> Represents you. Forest green? Forest green. Because the wilderness. I, if that's, I, yeah. Okay. okay. I don't understand what that question means. I don't have any idea how to answer it. This is, I've told you this before. I have a real problem with this question. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't make yes. any sense to me. He does not like this question. No. And because I, like, I see other people answer it like almost poetically because I subscribe. You should too. Mm-hmm. I don't understand this question. <laughs> like, I'm almost like I have a little bit of colorblindness. So I do feel like. Yeah. It's well, <laughs> that kind of gets, that kind of puts it into context yeah. as to why. No, However, it's, it's not that. I just don't I should have been means. prepared to have like this scientific reason like this theory behind color and how it connects to our personalities it's been made up. and <laughs> <laughs> so i have a friend who's an artist a professional artist and she like teaches class on like how color represents like like your branding and all of these things like personality and energy really? yeah it's super real i mean i believe that i'm it's sure there's real. good science behind it i just am saying i don't understand <laughs> it's it like i don't like the questions <laughs> Force green, keep it moving. The good thing is I'm a talker, so we can get, we can save time on question three or four or whatever it is. <laughs> force green. Okay, we're done. Cool. I like force, force green. Force green. He, he didn't want to answer that question. <laughs> I should have threw in a bonus because you didn't like that one. All right, this is going to be a good one. Okay, okay. Name three songs. Yes. Or three artists in your yes. playlist. <clears throat> and I'm really prepared to just be like, what? <laughs> oh, really? I mean, I do like a bunch of different stuff. You do. So I just, I'm curious to see. Yeah. I don't think that any of these will be, one of them is literally because of you. So this is a shout out to you. Well, yeah, no, it is the resurgence in my playlist is because of you, but the other two, you probably won't be super surprised. Okay. The ones that popped in my head. So the first one that is 
thank you very much is I'm so I've been li- I, in my own playlist is an Apple playlist. Does that count? Like another, like a like a cultivated playlist? I guess. It's because it's just one artist. Yeah. But it's the Jill Scott Essential playlist. Ah. <laughs> and this is because of you, because you went to that the Roots Music the Roots Festival Picnic. in uh-huh. Philly, right? Was it in Philly? Yep. Yeah. And um, you had mentioned, I think we either we got to talking about Jill Scott because mm-hmm. she wrote a lot of stuff for them or she was there. I don't remember. Was she mm-hmm. there? Yep. She was there. That's cool. She performed at the end with um, Common. Yes, that's right. Came I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so right. yeah, it was good. So ever since you said that, I was like, oh, I gotta go. yeah, Jill Scott. <laughs> and then you know how sometimes you like you fall off an artist? Yeah. And then, like, it, you rec- I, I'm, I do feel like I'm only, I've got only a few weeks left because mm-hmm. I really have gone down the rabbit hole. Like, oh, my <laughs> like, God. I mean, you really... the, but you said the whole collection, though. You were like the collection. Yeah, everything. So you've been Well, they like... call it the essentials, but there's like yeah. a lot of songs there on is. this thing. There really is. Well, she's so prolific. Yeah. But, I remember it was it's so funny too because for me it's like you know how music does this mm-hmm. it's like a journey like it for me it's the most strong or the strongest thing tied to like memories for me oh yeah like a song like if i hear you a certain immediately. song yeah yeah like i have like i'm like right back to the place mm-hmm. right so for me i remember the i this this guy discovered jill scott in high school the girl i was dating was like a jill scott fanatic <clears throat> she was a fanatic <clears throat> super fan yeah she was <clears throat> jill scott and janet jackson <laughs> And she was like, just made me love Jill Scott. I mean, it was easy, but like, I didn't really, I mean, I knew, uh, what was the song that was real big on the radio, Long Walk? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I knew that one, right? Mm -hmm. A couple others. But uh, man, so I fell in love with her through that. So like then it like took me back to a period in time, like a long time Aww, ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, where you and, were. Yeah, when so you first heard it, yeah. Anyway, Jill Scott. But I really, I've probably gone. She's too amazing. Hard. You have to see. Have you seen her live? No, no. You know what though? You asked me that not too long ago, and I, I said you. no, but then I remembered, I believe I saw her at the Ohio State Fair a you million years ago that. with that, that with my girlfriend. Yeah, She's, ama- like, she's amazing to see. If you, mm-hmm. see, you see her live, like, yeah. it just changes it for you. <clears throat> but I think, this could be made up, somebody Google it. <laughs> this could be made up, but I think she was performing with Music Soul Child, but that feels like they would have been both too big. In like, no, but they're both from Philly. But it was in Ohio. So, oh, you think they were doing it? Together. Really? See, I, he's from Ohio. Why would you do Ohio like that? Why would you do this like that? It's not like they're back home. But they're from Ohio. They're not in Philly. Maybe they were like deciding to come together. I don't I guess know. Musical artists travel around. Yeah, don't they? maybe yeah. it was like the because you know it was like the neo soul genre yeah, that know. people put them in. So maybe they were trying. And to... It was big back then because yeah. we're talking like late nineties, I guess. Yeah. Maybe two, maybe two thousand. Yeah. But I feel like they would have both been too big to be at the fair. I don't know. Maybe. <clears throat> maybe hmm. I'm just creating memory. I don't know. Don't Somebody know. out there will Google yeah. one of your many we'll, subscribers. We'll have to uh, verify that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so Jill Scott. That one is thanks to you. Uh, one that's always on there, Dave Matthews Band for me. Yeah. I've been. So Dave oh Matthews gosh. was like, yeah. So I always like have this weird relationship with the Dave Matthews Band. Not mm-hmm. weird because I love them. They're, they're <laughs> like my favorite <clears throat> band of all time. But uh, I loved Dave Matthews in like 1995 or six. Mm. And because I have a much older brother. And so even though he doesn't like Dave Matthews, my musical tastes are a little bit older because I wanted mm-hmm. to be like him, right? Um, so anyways, listening to stuff that was like a, not probably, and my parents were pretty like, I don't know, do your thing. Yeah. Do your thing, youngest. Whatever. Right? Yeah. So, so they were, anyway. Um, so I fell in love with Dave Matthews in like 95 or 96. And then this weird thing from my experience happened in like, the later 90s, like a bunch of frat boys adopted the Dave Matthews band. <laughs> and then what, you didn't stop listening to it? No, no, no. I just oh. stopped listening to it, but it made me mad because I was like, that's my thing. It's like, yeah. You're making it less cool. It happens with music. It does, right? And it makes, I, in my opinion, sorry, I, I, there's nothing wrong with fraternities and people that <laughs> listen just as a disclaimer. But you didn't want it to go like that, like yeah. commercial pop. Yes, like, that's exactly It's right. commercial pop. Yeah, yeah. you're and saying it much better than me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, thank you. You're saying it in a, in a way that won't offend anyone. <laughs> right, <you>. right. <laughs> uh, but so. Uh, that did not happen like I thought it was going yeah. to, but I got really like, almost like protective, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're this huge yeah. platinum band and I'm like, they're mine. It happens though. <clears throat> it happens with artists. Mm-hmm. People so, don't want to do that. Yeah, they really do, right? Like, it's almost like, it's such a weird thing as a mm-hmm. fan, like when you are a real music lover, it's like, yeah. you want them to be obviously like more people to listen to music. Mm-hmm. But like, you want, you just want to make sure everybody appreciates it the right way when you love a band. Yeah, <laughs> At least I definitely. Do. Yeah. yeah. And it's like... I don't know. Sometimes it feels like when it becomes mainstream, it's like, may they make it corny. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, it's cheapened. For sure. It's and like then a cheapened. lot of them kind of really do. I don't, I hate the term sellout because that's like, 
I don't know. Like you got to yeah. do your thing for yeah. providing stuff. But a lot of them really do start to make like totally different type mm-hmm. of music, right? And I don't blame them. For, I'm sure there's a lot of pressure, but <clears throat> it's and like album to album will change too if mm-hmm. they go like really mainstream. Yes. You'll hear the change in sound. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, the sound and mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, but Dave, yeah, so Dave Matthews is always on my playlist. I've I've been listening a lot to, um, they did a, uh, there's a great live album from Central Park. They did a Central Park concert in like mm-hmm. two, 2001 or something. And it's like, if you're a music lover, <clears throat> it's a great album because it's just like, it's just great musicality to it because they just, they riff a lot. And mm-hmm. like, he kind of like scats in between songs and stuff. Like, it's mm-hmm. really, re- it's really beautiful It's been music. a while since I listened to Dave Matthews, but when you Pick said that, that I was like, oh. Yeah, pick that one up. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last one is Chris Stapleton. I've been on this Chris Stapleton kick for like three or four years. I was just introduced to Chris Stapleton. You were? Congratulations. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the world, right? And um, it was a friend of mine I think I was working with, and he was like, uh, what's the song that he sings, the the remake that he's, that people just love how he sings it? Um, um, well, the big one that hit was Tennessee Whiskey. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That is, um, they were like, you should hear this version of Tennessee Whiskey. And then I listened to it and I was like, <laughs> what it's undeniable, in right? the world? Yeah, it's so, crazy. So, yeah, he's he's pretty amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like really good. Like the, It's like rich and yes. soulful yes. and it's just like it has like this, I don't know, it just makes you feel... Oh, feel beautiful. a kind of way like yeah. I think I also feel like Mark Broussard if you know him I, yeah a little bit he has a little bit of that like deep like yeah. rich raspy yes kind of I love that rasp yeah, <clears throat> yeah yeah so that's a good that was a good pick yeah it is it but yeah you're right like there's a lot of soul in it mm-hmm. and it's almost genreless right like he's mm-hmm. in the country box but it, there's like bluegrass in there there's yeah soul, there's a little bit of yeah, old blues rock. yeah little blues in there yeah for sure mm-hmm. so yeah to me if like for just for me personally, if somebody was like wanting to know exactly what kind of music I like, that's probably like that's because I like so much different yeah. kind of stuff. Like he's mm. probably the artist that typifies that for me mm-hmm. right now. So I just can't like I cannot stop. I all like I'll keep thinking like I have got to get this, tra- especially the his first album that was popular, <laughs> Traveler. I was yeah. like I gotta get this out of the rotation. But I, like I'll just go to like and then I'll be sitting in the office and I'm like. Oh, feels like a Chris Stapleton day today. Oh my goodness! You got you got to have your son singing Tennessee whiskey. We have a lot of dance oh, parties. Oh no! In our house. We have a Fans lot of dance gonna be parties. Singing Tennessee whiskey. That's probably the most played playlist on mine. Is the Sing soundtrack. Anybody who yes. has a four year old will know that. That's a good soundtrack. It <laughs> is a good soundtrack, actually. We Don't just you had worry a about party. a thing. Yes. <laughs> yep. We just had a dance party to that last night. He, <laughs> but he know what he does. He names. Uh, he names the songs by like the character that sings. So he's oh, like, I okay. want, I want the pig song. I so then the- you know who sings. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good stuff. But yeah. That's a good soundtrack. I'm it not even good, gonna like that is a good pretend one. that is not <laughs> bomb soundtrack. All right. So was that five? no last one? Last question. Okay. Oh, I thought that was five. Okay. What is the best advice you were given? The best advice I was given. Yes. Um, it's really simple. But my dad's a really good advice giver. Uh, well, my parents brought me up on the golden rule. Uh, and I think that's a good philosophy for life. But the best advice was my dad every day, like every day, it was really annoying at certain points in my life. Like when you were a teenager, right? Because yeah. you know, obviously dads don't in know the anything moment, when you're 15, it, yeah. especially as a boy. Yeah. Uh, but every day, on my way out the door or on his way out the door, he would say, work hard, have fun. Mm. And like at the time I was like, okay, all right, dad, you know? Yeah. But uh, we've had conversations about it, <clears throat> you know, as I've aged. And even looking back now, like, he, that really, I think, has been a part of his personal life philosophy. Mm-hmm. And, like, I've, I think I have adopted that, too. But, like, if you think, like, for me, if I think about it, uh, if you just boil, like, your day down in, into doing those two things every day, mm-hmm. like, you work really hard at something, especially if it's something that you feel yeah. like matters. And I don't mean it's some big grand thing, but, like, if you are building a room and you feel like, because I've done that, if you're framing out a room mm-hmm. and you and you feel like that matters and it's good work for the day and you can walk out and you see the thing you created, because I've done that and that's why I love that kind of work, mm-hmm. work hard at it. Yeah. And then have fun every day. Because, I mean, it's cliche, but like we are not here for a ton of time. Not at all. Right? I got a great book you could read about a lot about that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But like, if you do those two things. Like you should try to do more, but just imagine mm-hmm. if you just did those two. You worked hard at something that you cared about, yeah, and you had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. 
Like that's a good day. Yeah. You can go to bed. That's a pretty good day. Yeah. You know. So that's I think that's like it's so simple. But so when did you realize like that was good advice? <laughs> that was good advice. Uh, <laughs> College. No, probably a little later than that. Uh, <laughs> I think that I did. I think I did adopt it uh, as like a part of me for like way earlier than I really like intellectualized it. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm a pretty typical, <clears throat> at least in my experience, like guy where like I don't I didn't really appreciate like how smart and wise my dad particularly mm-hmm. was like get how wise he is uh you know I don't know probably till late 20s yeah because that's where, for me like when I really started feeling like all right like I'm a grown yeah man now not that I wasn't a man before and taking care of stuff but like now then I was like okay I have some thoughts about the world mm-hmm. like I have some perspective yeah you know what I mean and so yeah. then I start things like that started to settle in like oh like that's a what a good, simple way to look at your day, mm-hmm. look at your life, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm lucky I have a, my dad's got, had had an interesting, he's an interesting guy, had an interesting life, and he's just got a great perspective on the world. Mm-hmm. So I've been very lucky to be informed by that, but um, I don't know, it's like, it's not groundbreaking, but it, no, for me, it's, it's like. It's interesting, because all of the guests that I've had on the show, most of their advice has been from my parent. Is that right? And very, like, simplistic things, like mm-hmm. one, she had almost like a nursery rhyme. It was like really? never worry, never scurry, or never Ooh, I like never that. never worry, never something. It was something yeah. about never worry. Yeah. And she was like, it sounds elementary, uh-huh. but I use it whenever I'm getting frustrated. Mm-hmm. And so she just I like that. You know, it just it's it's interesting how the advice I was just having the conversation with my mom about this the other day. Because mm-hmm. I was like, Oh my god, I'm turning into you. <laughs> like she was doing like she so she came yeah. over this weekend, but long story short, she came over this weekend and she you know when a mom's been in your house because stuff is moved everywhere. Oh my god, yeah. So she's they moving. They don't ask. They just I'm do asleep. It. She's yeah. moving pots yeah. and pans and cleaning up stuff. Yep. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm turning into you. Like I'm saying <laughs> things that you say, and I'm doing things that you do. And she just like, ha. Ah. <laughs> that's funny to me. Like she's just know, laughing, right? but I'm like slowly like picking up the stuff that she does. Yeah. And my mom has her own like isms. Like she says right. stuff, and I'm like. Mom, where do you get that from? <laughs> where did you get that from? Me and my sister have like a whole book of them. And we're like, only my mom would say that. Like if it's cold, she'll say, put in your coat. The hawk's outside. Why is the, the hawk? Outside. Why is the hawk outside? Like a hawk? Like, like a, the hawk. She calls the hawk like a, oh, like it's cold. Hawk. Like the hawk's <laughs> outside. And we're like, mom, what's the hawk? Like, what's the hawk? Like, why? <laughs> Like she just says things That's and we're just hilarious. like, she thinks she's a meteorologist. I love her, but she thinks she's a meteorologist. <laughs> and every time it storms around, rain, she's like, you better make sure you got your umbrella, your coat. Cause it's getting ready to storm out there. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, you just, That's yeah. Amazing. So we do, we do like actually retain things that oh like our God, parents yeah. tell us. Yeah. And like we repeat those things, especially like you're, you're a father. So yeah. He probably like. God, I just say stuff all day, KP. Who knows mm-hmm. who's listening? To me? I don't know. But isn't it weird that we all you get to a certain age and everybody says that? Not everybody. Yeah. Most people Most like people. end up saying some version of what you mm-hmm. just said. And we all say it in this way, like, we're so surprised. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you do, most of us as you're in adolescence, like you have that period where you're like, these people don't they're know ridiculous. anything. Yeah, yep, they're, they're ridiculous. Yeah, they're ridiculous. And then you, it dawns on you like, oh, yeah, they know a lot. And then it dawns on you again like, oh, they had an influence on me. <laughs> like, of course they did, right? Yeah, because I'm like, I'm naturally doing stuff that like she did. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. what? Right. Like, so, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. So, thank you for playing the game. I like that game. That's a fun Five game. Questions. I would take out the color one, but if there's science and art, I guess, I don't know. I'm going to have to follow up. I'm going to submit a report. <laughs> That he's going to have to read. It's a good question. It's, Proof a, it's a fine question. All right. So now that we have answered the questions from the five question game, let's just get into the topic. Let's okay. just get into knowing more about you. Okay. So before we get started, just give you guys a little context. Um, Matt and I work together, right? Aside from other things, we, do. Um, we work together, but we also have kind of developed like this friendship where we, he like, helps me to like think about things differently, which I love. He's a thinker, like a Uh, real thinker. But also he really helps me to like, really reflect as to like why I think a certain way, (laughs) right? He's a a thought influencer, (laughs) if that was a thing. I like that. So I really thought it was really cool for you to come on the show um, just to want to pick your brain and to just kind of hear about like what your passions are and what you want to do. I'm happy to be so, here. This is super fun. I so love it. Let's formally introduce yourself and let's let's get into it. 
All right, well, I'm Matt Berry. I'm a thought influencer. And I- <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I work with KP at Evolve 502. Uh, check out our website forthcoming. Yes. And uh, right after you subscribe, of course, to the podcast. Uh, what else can I say? Do I, uh, I'm a dad of two kids, Finn and Lucy, husband to Alicia. Um, we have a new dog, Rosie, <laughs> who's, thank God, not a puppy anymore. Bro, I knew it was Rosie. I was Rosie. trying to think of your yeah. dog's name. Yeah. Um, yeah. Teach? I te- yeah, I teach at the University of Louisville. Um, professionally, I've been in um, uh, higher education for a really long time. Um, and see, the first thing I did in higher ed was I was a baseball coach. And then uh, I needed to pay rent and groceries. <laughs> and so I got a job in admissions, which is something we share and joke a lot about. <clears throat> um, and then I built, this was in Chicago, I built a first year program for at-risk students. And then was an uh, academic advisor and came down to University of Louisville in tw- uh, or came down to Louisville in 2011 uh, when my wife got a job down here and did my PhD work at U of L. Went over to the state for a little while and did some uh, research and policy stuff at the Council on Post Secondary Ed. This is all very exciting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> and then Riveting. worked in uh, <laughs> moved over to 55,000 degrees here. Started doing some community. Uh, education stuff and uh, now we're both a part of uh, Standing Up Evolve 502 which is a new exciting thing. I play softball on Sundays and I'm sore right now. <laughs> That's the most important thing to know. Yeah, that is the most important thing. He's he's trying to be a superhero. Yeah, I'm a former athlete who has not yet accepted his his age. Mm-hmm. So that's another important thing. <laughs> we'll have to work on that. Yeah, I just started I just started using the word former on that. I thought you were gonna say icy hot. <laughs> icy hot. I'm I just listening. started using some icy hot. <laughs> I'm five years of denial away from using icy hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So um I'm glad you kind of gave gave me like took us through this journey. Yeah. You know, really yeah. quick to kind of get the like, overview. You know, yes. like the bio. I'm sure yeah. you don't add all that stuff in the bio, but that would be a really good bio if yeah you know, if somebody had that. Yeah. But what I think particularly um, interests me is that I kind of see how you've taken like this journey to get to you know where you are currently. But like growing up, yes. Like what what growing up like how was growing up for you? that you think kind of led you and connected you to getting to like this place? How did I get to be like this? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I tried to say it nicely. <laughs> um, <laughs> God, I don't know. Um, let's see, so yeah, so I do have, I mean, I have an interesting, I mean, everybody does, has an interesting story, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I had a great, what I, I think I had a great childhood, I loved it. Uh, two cool, interesting, supportive parents, a cool older brother. Um, lived so like I guess the the easiest thing for me to think of and since I just gave my bio was what kind of what led me to education work mm-hmm. um, so I grew up in Columbus Ohio for the most part go Bucks um, and uh, it's football season uh, so I went to school uh, in what is considered and I hate this kind of you know this I don't like this kind of talk but mm-hmm. uh, what is like quantitatively considered a, re- a very low performing school district. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then <clears throat> did that, it was there until uh, middle school. And then through my, da- my dad's career pro- progression, we moved down to Cincinnati. So I went from uh, uh, a tough school district to a blue ribbon school district mm-hmm. in the course of a summer. Uh, and then not only that, it was like a set at seven through 12 environment. So it was a little weird. but. Um, and then moved back to Columbus to another like really high performing school district. But it, but this the weird part about that one was mm-hmm. it was like only twenty minutes from my other place. Mm-hmm. I grew up, right. So uh, my personal experience there was I mean I can still literally remember like the jolt from where I grew up to uh, the school district I grew up to to uh, the one in Cincy mm-hmm. where I was like it was like literally walking into an entirely different world. Wow. <clears throat> and in fact. Yeah. Just like most of the time, with with any kind of huge shock like that, mm-hmm. I, I did. I hated it. Yeah. Right. Like at first, it wasn't just about the move. Like I hated the environment. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time. <clears throat> this is very specific. <clears throat> excuse me. This is very specific. But um, the first time that we had a sub in seventh grade at the new school district, mm-hmm. I remember because I'm a, I was always like a I was like in school I was always a big time rule follower, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the really yeah in school. 
Oh. Just in school. I was about to say. Let's talk about that. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, just because I think weird doesn't mean I was weird. <laughs> so I, uh, the sub walked in, and in my old school, it was like the sub, when the sub was there, it was like, I mean, chaos. It was mm-hmm. like, I remember sixth grade, this is kind of funny. Uh, maybe not, I don't know, whatever. But I remember like sixth grade, like, we'd have a sub and they're like trying to write to people trying to write their name on the board and like mm-hmm. literally all of a sudden like here comes like 15 pieces of chalk just boom 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 oh everybody just starts throwing right we had it in the morning ready like so like this is like but then i go so i'm like oh man here we go right yeah first thing in the morning and they're like hi i'm mr jones and everyone's like good morning and i'm like what and you're like what is this <laughs> what uh, I'm, I'm like all right they're slow playing whatever yeah. you know what yeah. i mean like <laughs> That's just what it was. So um, anyway, and I had like I loved where I love where I grew up. I'm still friends with a lot of those guys and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like anyway, it led me to education. I mean, because it was like, I mean, you can't have that disparate a yeah. system. Like yeah. my third grade math teacher, I mean, my third grade teacher, excuse me, got mad at us because we were talking and messing around and ma- well during math, and she said, "I'm not teaching you math for the rest of the six weeks as your punishment." And she didn't do it. She fell. She followed through what? on it. She did a whole six week thing. Or maybe it was like four of the six weeks. She just didn't do it. And so she just gave y'all just arbitrary grades just, or what? Yeah, yeah. As far as I remember, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, my goodness. But you, so, like, my thing was, like, you can't have something that different. Mm-hmm. Right? <clears throat> so that was, like, that to me, like, in terms of my professional path, even though I probably, I didn't really, I couldn't really articulate that until I was, uh, until I got into an educational setting as a professional and was like, oh, I like this. And like, mm-hmm. oh, wow. I'm like really started to really try to understand why I got so passionate so fast about it. Yeah. And then I started thinking like, oh, I know because I, you know, I can mm-hmm. see how this can provide opportunity. Right. You and, saw, you saw like the differences. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that was a big part of what led me to where I am professionally. But like, you know, just, uh, you know, my, just like, I think a lot of people that are lucky enough to grow up with, uh, parents in the home and our loving supportive environment mm-hmm. like they were a big influence they both grew up in pretty rough uh in their own right rough situations and mm-hmm. um have just uh anyway they they both sort of made decisions i think not i think i know individually they made decisions to like break which at whatever cycles those were mm-hmm. and that they grew up around and so uh it's interesting to be raised by two people like that mm-hmm. like it's very inspirational yeah um uh, but it it plays out in a lot of different ways. Like they can be real, like lots of expectations, mm-hmm. also lots of like understanding. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, but that's definitely a big. As I look at like my family stuff growing up and like how it's mm-hmm. influenced uh, who I am, and yeah. <clears throat> certainly like you know they remove themselves from those environments, but like that was still you know it's still part mm-hmm. of your family and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's so still it's a part a big, of it. Yeah, so it's a big, it's a big part of it. But anyway, it's cool to grow up in a house with people like that. Mm-hmm. And I see, I think it's really unique how it, you know, your experiences growing up like shapes, like your perspective. Yeah. But also, I think it's also pretty cool that you were able to see just the differences in, in the type of education and the way our public school, mm-hmm. our education system kind of is set up. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. how the system works mm-hmm. and to be able to see that and to be able to kind of connect to it in a direct way oh, because... Yeah now it really is infused in the work that we do. Mm -hmm. And like, I think that for those of you who don't know what we do. um, (laughs) Yeah, I guess that'd be good. Right, we work, (laughs) our organization works to support students uh, transitioning to college. Um, So we are the, you know, post-secondary, the the post-secondary, oh oh God, I just had a, a (laughs) so for those of you who don't know, We, uh, I don't want to say, because my, I say the coll- a collective impact or convening group, yeah. but I don't want to throw people off. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're the, we're the, we're a group in town trying to get everybody we to are, and through college. Right. That's our whole goal. We, right. So I don't want to use this huge language right. to Right. Yeah. That nobody, folks. nobody understands. Right. So we are instrumental in supporting um, students and helping to make sure that we really work to, um, you know, help to close the equity gap and to help to create a system that works for all students, that yeah. provides access for all students. Yes. And so that is the nature of our work. And I think that it is yes. so cool mm-hmm. that you were able to experience that. And so can you talk a little bit about um, particularly like your piece and your role at Evolve 502 and kind of like what your what your dream is for that? Right. What, what is like? What are you envisioning oh. for that? Because oh. it's a big piece. It's a big piece. <laughs> well, that's a good question. Yeah. Jeez. Like, 
<clears throat> Here's something. I, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. What were you Because you're saying? like, because I, I work with you every day. So I see yes. that you're like, you're building and we're, we work together to collaborate ideas and to think about and envision what it's supposed to be. Yeah. But like, ultimately, like, what do you envision? Like, if you could say, this is what yeah. I want it to be, what is it that you want it to be? So, yeah, that's a, God, that's a really good question. Um, I think that what I'm, what I partic- personally am doing is I get to play a little bit at like the system level, right? So I get to think about what the strategy for us to accomplish the stuff that you just said would be. I get to think about how we might try to manipulate, and not pejoratively, but manipulate mm-hmm. the players in town mm-hmm. uh, and try to get them on the same page. So how we can work with the school district or work with the university where there might be common interests. So like I'm trying to, I get to play, I get to look from up here at the mm-hmm. at the pieces down here, and try to figure out what what we need to be doing and what could be better and stuff like that. And I can, mm-hmm. I do that through through policy and research and um, helping you develop student success initiatives and all mm-hmm. that kind of scholarship, all that kind of stuff. Um, my goal for where we're going, uh, one of my goals, I should say, um, but I think that I can accomplish through my role is to position our organization as not as the only, but as a key conscience for the city. Mm -hmm. So I think we have an opportunity to, through our action, through our advocacy, and through our knowledge base to be a thought leader and to be a group that can step up and say, this this is where we're going. Yeah. And this is why that's not good. This is who that's not good for. Mm -hmm. This is why we are that way. Yeah. And here's a way that we can make it better. Yeah. And here are some options for the things that we do. And by the way, this is the dollars we need and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. right? And to be uh, at times maybe a cheerleader, but most I think mostly a cheerleader for families and for mm-hmm. young people. Yeah. Uh, but to really act as the voice of consciousness. Mm-hmm. That's that's where I think we can position ourselves. I definitely <clears throat> like I like the way that you put that um, because I think that us as an entity in the self is like a lot of times there is not an organization that really is like the voice of reason yeah. or is the voice that says, okay, this is mm-hmm. wrong, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right? right? We have to fix this in our city. Yes. And I think that it is so like the work that we do, we're so connected to everyone. Yeah, like, that's right. and like, even when I'm with students and I'm explaining, like I did a, I did a, a presentation today with students mm-hmm. and I wanted to like explain to them like what we offered and how important the work is that we did. Yeah. And when I got done explaining it to them, they were just like, wow, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes. And one was like, can I be an ambassador? So, oh, that's great. That's great. so, so we just that. recruited yeah. an ambassador today. Great. I love that. But I think that, um, that's, I, that's awesome how you explained it because I, there's so many ways to kind of see our work yeah, and it, sure. sometimes it can be, Sometimes the nature of our work can be really overwhelming when we look no at doubt. what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, no doubt. And looking at it from just mission focused yes. and the lens that we con- we constantly have to maintain yes. is that it's about the community, it's about the students, it's about yeah. the families. That's right. Um, it's super, super important. That's and right. so um, moving forward, you where would we, what do you think that eventually you'd like to see you all 502 go? Uh, I want, so... <clears throat> I really would like for us to show the rest of our state Mm -hmm. what can happen uh, when private private individuals, uh, business community, that's a really super broad term, Mm -hmm. I know, but business community, community community-based organizations, a municipality the size Mm -hmm. of the city come together and not in a philosophical way, yes. in a strategic way. I mean, you have to get mm-hmm. philosophically aligned, mm-hmm. but, but I think that's easiast actually, particularly mm-hmm. when you have a mission like ours. It's very easy to get people to align behind the goal of serving young people toward mm-hmm. a post-secondary degree and a successful life, right? Yeah, You're not gonna get a ton of people to line up against that. So that's the easy part. The, the hard part is to say like, all right, we're all sitting in the room, and we're all saying the right stuff, mm-hmm. but let's talk about how we might redistribute dollars. Yeah. Let's talk about how we might act differently as institutions. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about how something that that institution does affects this type of uh, other institution, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's that next step. Yeah, yeah. And what Where I think you really that, get into like the the system change. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. And I think what's you're right. It can be overwhelming. 
Um, but I think it, we can, we're, it's so like we're a perfect laboratory, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's why I think we can be, I know, I think we can be a model for the state. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we need to be, somebody needs to be. Um, we have a lot of people, I think, hurting in the state. And that's mm-hmm. not just Kentucky, but we do yeah. have a lot of people hurting. And so I think that that's what I would like to see us do. Um, but I really would like, I really uh, also just particularly think, because there are, like, now we're getting down into, like, this is, like, our stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's exciting. Yeah. I think there's a lot of places around the country that are trying something, like, in the neighborhood of mm-hmm. what we're doing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and not a lot of places have been successful moving past the sit in the room and have a great conversation about it stage. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're trying to do. It yeah. feels really hard. But we we have um, one of the things, we talk, we've talked about this a few at least a few times. One of the early successes that we've had. Uh, and it's not super visible, but we've got the right people around the table at the governance level. Like we've got all the right players at the board level. So that's really mm-hmm. important. But we're also assembling and have already assembled a team that makes like these big things doable. So we've got these people, we've got these like superstar people mm-hmm. like you that are taking these big chunks of work. Like, hey, can you go develop a, a plan for what <laughs> it looks like for community based people yeah. to serve JCPS students to college? Mm-hmm. Like, that's a big thing. But you can focus on that piece, given your experience and your talent, while Charles is over there focusing on what it means to wrap the community-based services around a school, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've got all of the, and those are all big things individually. Like, it's not like they're not overwhelming on their own, but like to think about the entire thing Mm -hmm. at one time is impossible. Um, So I do think that that's a cool example. And that's like, that's not even specific to our organization. Like, I think that's just a great lesson is to try to find passionate, talented people and then trust them to do their thing, right? I yeah. think that I think we our organization is doing a good job of that. We definitely do. I mean, I think that, like you said, we are just the fact that we're able to get all of the people in the room yeah. having the conversation. And not just having, because, you know, there are, there are countless meetings, there are countless mm-hmm. attempts to really talk about system change. Yeah. But to really point out, like, what is the problem? Like, yeah. you know, what are the problems that we're facing? Mm-hmm. Um, what are what are real life experiences? Like, what are people really experiencing? Yeah. And I think that we have been able to do that. But I also think, like, that our team has just a unique set of skills. Yes. Right? Yeah. We have a particular yeah. <laughs> uh, set of skills that yeah. really help us to really be able to create impact yeah, and change. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, like, super excited about that. Um, and especially the direction that we're headed, mm-hmm. um, I think that we will, we will definitely. I think doors will begin to open for us, particularly because of the relationships and the partnerships that we've created. But it also helps me to understand like how great of a city Louisville is. Yeah. Right? I'm not originally from Louisville. I'm Lil Terry Brad. I have to say that. Um, yeah, where so, do you say you're from? I don't ever say. You I'm don't from say anywhere. you're from a place because right? I don't feel like I'm from anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I grew up. Uh, Radcliffe was the longest place that I've lived. Radcliffe. Um, Fort Knox. Uh, seventh grade, my father retired. So, okay. seventh grade to 12th grade. Okay, that's I lived in Radcliffe and then I was on military uh, ba- post Fort Knox, which is like five minutes away right. um, from kindergarten to seventh grade. Okay. To, yeah, gotcha. seventh grade. Yeah. So, it's like, but then my family's from Virginia, so my roots are Virginia. Right, right, right. I've always wanted to like go back. I always felt connected. I wanted to go to Hampton University and my dad was like, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Louisville is just a really great community. And I think that once I started to really um, get in, started to do the work that we do, mm-hmm. I started to see all of the community resources and yeah. all of the community yeah. um, organizations that are really doing the work. Mm-hmm. And I'm running into people and to just be able to bring all of that together mm-hmm. to offer that to our students and to like our schools and mm-hmm. to families. And to just, because really it's about access, right? It's yeah. really about, like, if they don't have the information, yeah, that's right. how can they use the service? Yeah. You know, I think it too, it, like, I would, the other part I love about that is that um, <clears throat> there's so many talented, hardworking people and groups out, out mm-hmm. there. And it, like, it also helps, um, I don't know what the right word is, but it just helps, like, like put that to the, the spotlight, yeah, their work. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Exactly. It really does. I think that it's, it's really cool because then, like, the community has options. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. Because there's so many great, like, I was in a, a Ready for K meeting and, like, they're talking. That's not a space I know a ton about. Mm-hmm. I just go to meetings. Who knows? But they, <laughs> <laughs> people keep asking me. So they, uh, but they, they're talking about, like, child care centers and stuff, mm-hmm. right? 
and um, just all these like <clears throat> that's just one of many many examples but like they've got all these great like early care places that are you know they may they may serve 25 kids but like yeah. they're doing a world of good for 25 kids mm. and you know they don't show up on the radar a lot you no. know what I mean but like what could they do if they even had additional resources and they had if they were part mm-hmm. of a larger system and they could leverage that so mm-hmm. you know it's a big hope but I think it we is. can go it's where it's for sure it's the, I'm 100% convinced, 100% convinced it's where we need to go as a, yeah. as a city. Yeah. It's where more cities need to go. You know, it, the challenge is going to be how you get there. But mm-hmm. So we have a great task before us. Yes. But I feel like we all have the skill set. Yes. To handle it. Right. Yes. We definitely have the skill set. We definitely have the drive. Yes. To do so. So I think that we will. No, I know that we will. Yeah. Create the change that we want to yeah, help Yeah, we're create, sure as hell going to try it on the way down. Right, we sure are. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go down swinging. We're going to make some noise. <laughs> we're going to go down swinging. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, great things, definitely great things, and definitely enjoy being able to work with you. Thank you for believing in me and my work. You're easy to believe And in. what I have to give and all of the crazy ideas that I come in and say, <laughs> hey, what do you think about <laughs> Dot, 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 right? Uh, what do you think? Uh, That's great, KP. Yeah, I love it. Well, KP. <laughs> you know? Tell me why. He's like, well, KP. <laughs> but most of the stuff I come to doesn't usually cost us money. That is true. I know. That is very a true. skill. You and Dewan are exactly the same yeah. in that. We, yeah. yeah, you all never never come up with ideas that cost money. We know. Watch out if we ever get a budget. <laughs> but I know, right? Spending it. <laughs> Spitted it. So, <laughs> so we always end every episode with the question, when did you know that there was more? And the mm. question, when, you know, when did you know that w- there was more? Just um, if you would share a critical time in your life where you were like, I got to do something else. I got to do something different. Mm-hmm. I've got to strive for something else, whatever that is. Yeah. What, what is that moment for you? That's, uh, ooh, gosh, I love it. I know. I, yeah, you know what's funny? I really do watch these because I subscribe. <laughs> and, like you should, uh, and I guess I forgot that that's the last question because mm-hmm. now I'm like, God, what a good question. <laughs> Just another way of saying I don't know what to say. Um, I'll tell you what. You know why I'm having trouble saying it it's, or thinking of it is because it's not one uh, like tiny amount of time. It's mm-hmm. sort of like a period. Okay. Um, of my from like my early to mid twenties probably. Um, so <clears throat> when I was in my early twenties. I probably, I didn't know, uh, it's not that I didn't work hard at stuff, because I definitely did, right? Like I was an athlete in college, I cared about stuff, so it wasn't like I was listless. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have a clear direction for where I was headed, I hadn't figured that out yet. Mm -hmm. Um, So I didn't, you know, if you don't know where you're going, it's hard to be super passionate about the journey to get there, right? So I got got this job uh, while I was coaching, really I wanted to, I was coaching really, but I got this job at this credit union uh, lovely place, Mid State Educators Credit Union in Columbus, <laughs> Ohio, and I hated it. I mean, I hated it. I think we all had those. Oh my gosh. Those times. But you know, I had like, I mean, you know, I worked manual labor jobs and all this kind of stuff. But like, that was the first time I ever sat down. Like, it was like day three, and I was mm-hmm. like, This is not this my reality. This can't be the yeah. rest of my life. I cannot be. And there, I mean, really honestly, there's nothing wrong with it, right? Mm-hmm. But for me, it was like, mm-hmm. it was like just dying inside every day, right? Mm-hmm. Just going in and doing monotonous stuff, not just like, couldn't stand it. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I think the light switch turned on there, that sounds really uh, mundane, but like, for me, I was like, okay. I had already recognized, I think, like I, I really need to figure out where it is I wanna go, mm-hmm. right? What my passion is professionally. And I'm passionate about a ton of stuff, but I couldn't figure, nobody drafted me for baseball. <laughs> so. <laughs> So that was really not on the in, on the table for a long time, but then I realized it. No, yeah. So I just like I hadn't figured out. Okay, what is it I want to be doing for a long period of time? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so uh, I, I really do think I was mostly just lucky to get a job in admissions uh, mm-hmm. in at Benedictine University in Chicago. A woman named Hope Kieber was the HR rep there. She called me. I remember I was sitting in my car in a park mm-hmm. in Columbus on my lunch break because I took <laughs> all 60 minutes of my lunch break on that, <laughs> at that job. I was like, 59, okay, I got to go back. Anyway, 
So I was talking to her doing my interview, and we hit it off, and she was like really wonderful. And I still remember that because it feels like it was a real turning point for me. Mm-hmm. Not getting that job, but in that job. Mm-hmm. And then I remember, sorry if I'm going on too long, but no, it's okay. I remember um, I just, you know how like uh, it feels good, especially when you're younger. I mean, it always does, but like to be good at something right like, yeah. right away. And I was like, because I was a little nervous about that because I was like, oh man, recruiting, I don't know, right? Recruiting just for the school. I was used yeah. to recruiting for, like for a team, but for that's sports. a little different. Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, this feels, and like my first day they were having some event. So I was like on the phone, you know what I mean? This is back in the day. We were on the phone and I'm like calling people like, hey, are you coming to the event? You know, so I'm like, oh, this yeah. feels a little salesy. Yeah. And then I just like, we started travel season and blah, 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 right? You know how admissions goes. And uh, I loved it and I was good. I was really good at it. Mm. <clears throat> and then I remember, this is the last piece of it, I think, uh, this guy named Charlie Gregory was our uh, executive vice president. I think he might be the president there now. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, anyway, he was, you know, he was a higher ed lifer. Uh, one of those, like, I think he was from like Tennessee or something. Had like <laughs> the perfect lifer. Southern accent. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. so, such a charming, sweet guy, but like, like sharp. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, knows his stuff. Knows his stuff. Uh, super charismatic. Like, we would have these monthly meetings of all staff meetings, mm. and he would give, it was like the Charlie show. It was mm. like, I mean, he would give, he would spotlight other people, but like he would give like 20, a little 20 minute address. And at the end, I'm like, every time I'm like, Charlie's the best. <laughs> so I say all that to say I was, you know, maybe like a year in, I think it was, maybe it was like an annual review or something like that. Mm-hmm. The direct, admissions director was talking to me, you're doing a great job, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, I, she was like, you know, I believe this and a couple of other people said this, like we could see you being like a Charlie someday. Ooh. And like for me, a light bulb you're went like, off. You're like, what? I was like. First of all, like the compliment felt like so misplaced because I ha- I held this guy in such esteem. Yeah, but I still do. I don't. He doesn't. Probably doesn't. He was like, he's at like all, the goat. Right? Yeah, right. He is. Yeah, <laughs> this dude has no idea who I am, but I'm like right. Charlie. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, it was like it felt very validating, but it also felt like all of a sudden this new um, path opened mm-hmm. up because I was like, yeah, maybe I could make a thing at this you mm-hmm. know what i mean maybe i could make a career at this thing that i have found out that i really like and mm-hmm. like there's and then you know i started to learn in higher ed there's all these cool avenues and opportunities and mm-hmm. like what a game changer it is for people and then started that reflection about like how influential it had been in my life and my family's life and stuff yeah. and so just like that one that couple year little journey of being like this isn't for me this like just grabbing a job thing mm-hmm. And then experiencing that like validation of like not only do I love this, not only do I think it's impactful, but like somebody's telling me that they think I could be good in this. Like mm-hmm. that was a very and that yeah. was like in a couple years span. That was a very uh, it just felt very um, Pur- it was like purposeful. Yeah, like, it yeah. was. It was the first time I ever felt any professional purpose. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I still think I would have loved to be a coach. I really do think that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I but I didn't have obviously didn't have enough. A commitment to that to pursue mm-hmm. it through the the hardship of like it's hard i mean you don't make yeah. a good living at being a coach for a long time yeah and uh i mean it's not like admissions has a ton of money either <laughs> but um anyway i it just like felt very much like i could make a run at this like mm-hmm. this is um and it's something that i feel like could matter right uh so that was a really uh yeah i think i think just like that like even even that one moment, I still obviously remember. Like you could, we think you could be like a Charlie someday. Like that's a big deal for, like, a, for yeah, a kid. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's a big deal. I know, and because now you have a PhD. Now I have a PhD. <laughs> I don't think Charlie has a PhD, just for what it's worth. <laughs> Charlie's still the goat. I'm just kidding. Right. Charlie's still the goat. You, I, mean, I don't have the accent. You went have, from like uh, you know, to a PhD. Like he had the suit every day. You know, he's one of these guys. Every day he had the suit. Work in progress. You'll get yeah, there. <laughs> I know. I'll be Charlie someday. I'm not gonna really be Charlie. <laughs> Charlie's the with best. a PhD though. <laughs> so, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I feel like we all, at some point, um, admissions is something that you just landed in for sure. Because working for the university is something I landed into. I had yeah. a job I hated. I had uh-huh. just bought a house. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get a call and they're like, "Hey, you want to come work for the university?" I'm like, mm-hmm. "Guess I got to do something with this house because I'm out of here," you know. And it yeah. just opened up a whole world. Yes. So I was on the way to being broadcasting major. Yeah. And producing, which I just circled back around. <laughs> right. So, right. and then you wanted to do um, coaching yep. and look at where you are. So yeah. I think that just life just takes us there. Mm-hmm. I'm so. happy. I'm happy. I'm really happy it happened for a lot of reasons, but it's a great field. Even though I'm sort of more adjacent now, I still teach at L, mm-hmm. but like it's a great field to be a part of because mm-hmm. it just can, when done right, there's tons of problems to fix. 
but it can be the game changer for people and for the future of where we need to go, like as communities, as mm -hmm. a country, however you want to think of it. Because it's just, it's it's the best way to um, change the game. It's the best way to liberate mm -hmm. people. It, it, is. it just It just really is. And that's that's the hope I have for it. I've seen I've seen much much more good out of the out of that institution mm -hmm. than I have bad. Yeah. Um, with all the bad. So anyway, I'm very I'm very happy to sort of be that it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Not that yeah. I had a ton to do with it. <laughs> well, and then after you're done, after your work is through. Yes. You can go to the Montana. I can go teach at the University of Montana. <laughs> Be on notice, University of Montana in Missoula. I will be applying at some point in the future, and, uh, <laughs> and I expect to get a call. <laughs> and then, and still live off the grid. You gonna uh, live off the grid still? Well, I want to do both. I want to have a I want to have a place in town by campus on the grid. Okay. Because winters are tough up there. Yeah. I'm, not that, I'm not that tough. <laughs> and then you know, go go up. And in then the go out. Okay, yeah. that's better. Yeah. Because yeah. I just envisioned yeah. you just like. Yeah. You remember Matt Barry? <laughs> Long ago. Yeah. Now he's just like... <laughs> I'm just writing manifestos yeah, just, in the woods. Yeah. No. So that's good to know that you want to teach as well as go off the grid. So I can, I can dig that. As long as I have tenure. You teach one class a semester or something, you know. <laughs> that's definitely feasible. But we, but we got we to gotta do our thing first. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming to the thank show. You. I fun. appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys enjoy checking us out and I hope you guys enjoy uh, Matt's story and we've definitely got more cool episodes to go. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast one more time. You can also check us out on Instagram and Facebook, but until next time, thank you for tuning in and be blessed. <laughs>